Well, hello, I'm Emeril Lagasse. Welcome to the Essence of Emeril. You know, when I go out to eat in New Orleans, there's a good chance I'm heading for my favorite poor boy shop. You see, when I grew up in Fall River, Massachusetts, Grinders, Grinders, it was this wonderful place by Columbus Park that had these unbelievable grinders in this brick oven that they did this incredible bread with. And I also had my share of affairs, as they say, with Philly cheesesteaks. Did a dance with a Cuban sandwich, but my heart belongs to poor boys. Poor boys. That's right, in New Orleans. You know, I tell my friends, look, you know, there are poor boy shops and those mom and pop restaurants just about on every corner in New Orleans and also in the country. It's not only just in New Orleans and they're all very different. I have one place uptown, my favorite uh, streetcar sandwiches, smoked soft shell crab poor boy, maybe couchon de lay, couchon de lay, that's that roast, roast uh, pork, oh man. And mothers, a little debris sandwich sometimes, a little debris poor boy that ends with the roast beef and, oh man, I'll tell you, they're good. And a ferdy which is a poor boy, but at Mother's they call it a ferdy down there in New Orleans. With ham and roast beef. And that's right, it's not difficult uh, ingredients that we're talking about. And I personally think for a great poor boy or a grinder or all those regional sandwiches that we have, a hero, one of the important things is great bread. I have a great friend in LA, Nancy Silverton, who is a wonderful bread baker and every time I go out there I end up bringing bags and bags of bread back with me because bread is so important. You have the typical French baguette, or French bread or Italian bread and certainly growing and working in a Portuguese bakery I was very very young when I learned what great bread was and the yeast and water and how it just proofs in the right time to proof it and baking it, whether it was done in those little wooden boxes sprinkled with cornmeal in Fall River, my early baking days, or rolling it out and seeing all the bakers rolling out this wonderful Italian bread and French bread, good crispy Portuguese bread. But there are other breads that you can make great sandwiches with, or po' boys, that's right, po' boys. Well, you could make it out of this ring bread, cutting it in half and filling it with your favorite. And the seeded, you know, the rye, different rye breads and sandwich breads, a little peasant bread, having a little sandwich out of uh, peasant bread. Delicious. And they should always be fresh and take care of the bread. You know what this is here? This is a bread that they use for muffaladas. Another famous sandwich, which we're going to talk about and show you later on in the show. And a great seeded uh, Kaiser roll or a burger roll. A little, uh, little roll, a little ippy roll right here, this is. Bread, very, very important. Now, once you got the bread, you need the fillings. And I told you about that delicious, one of my favorite poor boys being that smoked soft shell crab. Well, one of my favorite poor boys that I would make for you in season would be a soft shell crab poor boy. I'll show you how easy it is to whip up some of these soft shell crabs. I've got a couple of cleaned, cleaned soft shell crabs. And I've got two things I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you cornmeal, which we fry in. And I'm also going to just show you some seasoned flour as well. Cornmeal and seasoned flour. So here's the cornmeal, and here's our flour. But guess what? It's got to be seasoned, because it's got to taste good. So it's got to put a little bit of spice and jazz and all that stuff right in there, mix that up. So that way when we, we fry, now look, I'm going to take one, one soft shell, and I'm going to dredge it in flour. And frying is a very easy but very important technique, certainly they do a lot of great frying in, in New Orleans. 
So we want to dredge it in there real good. And then, no egg wash. Now you could, if you want to get that uh, a, a crispier batter, you may want to uh, dip it in an egg wash right now and then dip it back in the flour again. And then, this one here, I'm just going to use the seasoned cornmeal. That's right, seasoned cornmeal. It has a little different texture and has a different way of frying. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to dredge it in there. So, got one in our cornmeal, one in flour, and we take our hot oil and just sort of fry them right in there. And we do the one with flour and we fry that one in there. And when you're frying, you want to be careful of the water that you don't get, get it splatted on you. You can maybe use a, a screen as well. And the thing is with the soft shell, just like that. You want to turn them over when you're frying. Get them both sides, real crispy and really delicious. Look at that. Don't they look great? Well, speaking about great, this is my favorite, my favorite type of poor boys, soft shell crabs. And when they come out like that being fried, I like to season them again with a little bit of that special seasoning. And I'll tell you what, when we come back, I'm going to show you how crazy I am for poor boys. We're going to make all kinds of poor boys, so stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. Don't go away. Welcome back. And uh, wait till you see this spread that I'm whipping up for you. But uh, you know the importance of frying. It's very important with these poor boys and when you're frying things. I'll give you a couple more uh, little of my favorites. Oysters. Right here, oysters. We're going to fry a couple of those oysters. I love oysters and Louisiana oysters. Woo! Boy, are they good. And uh, also we can dredge them in flour and dredge them in cornmeal. Got to turn them around, make sure we got them all nice and even and crispy. You know, while you guys were away there for a minute, I actually fried up some oysters, had those soft shell crabs. I fried up some shrimp. Mmm, poor boys, regional sandwiches, grinders. No, poor boys. We're going to stay with poor boys. All right. Take a few of these out. Fry them up real good. Season them up real good. All right. Let's put some seasoning on them. All right, now, I've got some... Let me give you a rundown on this list and put you right inside New Orleans there for a minute. This is some shredded cabbage right here. And a lot of poor boy shops uh, in New Orleans, they use cabbage instead of lettuce. Shred it up real, real fine, white cabbage, and shred it up, you know, the kind that you do the coleslaw with. And that's when you, uh, when you get a, a sandwich. They'll ask you, they'll say, um, Emerald, you want it dressed or not dressed? What does that mean, you may say? Well, I'm going to show you what it is in New Orleans when they ask you dressed or not dressed. And this is lettuce. This is another, just a little chiffonade of lettuce. Those delis delicious fried oysters right here. I fried them up. I've got some, some relish, or pickle relish, you may call that. And this here, Creole mustard. My favorite. Creole mustard. It's a green, a whole green uh, spicy type mustard. I love Creole mustard. They're those delicious soft shell crabs we fried up. And some shrimp. I love fried shrimp. A fried shrimp poor boy. Dressed. Whoo! Marinades. That's what they call it. Marinades. You know that New Orleans? I think they uh, per capita eat more mayonnaise than any place in the United States. You know why? It's all those poor boys they're eating. That's why. So we've got mayonnaise, I've got some tomatoes, 
and I've got also a little bit of mustard. And guess what? Even on poor boys, we're going to use some spice. So let's, uh, let's, let's whip up some, all right? We take our... We take our crispy bread, our great bread that we talked about. We've got the components. Now we've got great bread. We've got great fillings. That's all it is. Now, poor boys, here we go. You want that dressed or not dressed? I'm going to take it dressed. Okay. Well, we're going to get some mayonnaise first. That's usually the first layer. And the mustard thing is usually an optional. Yeah, usually optional. Or places like, like Frankie's, another great poor boy place, they'll take the mustard, put it on the other side. We got mayonnaise on one side and mustard on the other side. Then take some shredded, some shredded lettuce. Oh, smell of poor boys. And some tomato. Now, even some tomato, even the poor boy gets seasoning. That's right. Got to get salt and pepper at least. I think I'm going to do, I'm starving. I think I'm going to have a little fried shrimp, poor boy. So we'll take our fried shrimp. Woo, woo. All right, we got our fried shrimp. Ah, uh, got to get him in there. All right. Now, got to have a little Creole mustard. Because you got to get a little, a little spice, and they just run it right down like that. All right. Relish is optional. Got the spice. Look at that. See how simple that was? Then the cut comes. I love that sound. Then they usually wrap it. If you're going to take it to go, they wrap it in that just newspaper and take it away. Whew, I'm going to make another one. You know why? I told you one of my favorite ones, one of my favorite poor boys is the soft shell crab. So look, I'm going to do this one up real quick. I'm going to take that marinade. You know, it's really true what I was saying about the per capita eating more mayonnaise than, uh, than anyone in the United States. It's really true. Okay. All right, now I got the mayonnaise on there. I want a lot of Creole mustard on this one. Hey, let's serve up. Let's serve this one up right over here. Okay, come back to that one. All right, Creole mustard. I love Creole mustard. Now, you know, we have the regular meats and cold cut type of poor boys as well. I'm going to use a little cabbage this time as well as a little lettuce. Come here, you guys. I'm going to build a little combo. One there and one there and some fried oysters right in the center. Woo-hoo! Man! Tomato and tomato and tomato. Now it's dressed and a little seasoned. Yes, indeed. A little bit of lettuce. Woo! What a poor boy I got here. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? Doesn't that look delicious? So I got a combo. I've got a little soft-shell crab and oyster poor boy on that one. I hope you got, I hope your taste buds are just running a mile a minute at home there. Little uh, poor boys, that's right. And guess what? When we come back after the break, I'm going to show you the difference between a poor boy and a muffalata, another great New Orleans in institution. So stay with me. Hey, welcome back. And you know, the Italian immigrants, that's who came to the French Quarter in the early part of the century, really had a big impact on the food there, believe me. And if, he, uh, if it wasn't for them, probably wouldn't have a muffalata today. That's right, muffalata. Before we do that, I found some interesting information about pole boys that I wanted to share with you. You know, it's could also be called poor, as in O-O-R, boy, a sandwich made from French bread loaf split in half and filled with a variety of ingredients like ham, beef, cheese, oysters, tomatoes, and gravy. 
That's really true. A lot of poor boys do have gravy there, nice and soggy. However, similar to a hero, they're a New Orleans specialty. And then it says they were originally called push, push sandwiches, because the meat was pushed along the length of the bread to save the best pot for last. It says the poor boy was created in the 1920s by Benny and Clovis Martin, owners of the Martin Brothers Grocery. I find that interesting. Wish the place was still around. However, another story says that the term is related for the word in French of gratuity. Poor boys. All right, we got that now. Now we're going to show you the difference between the muffalata down there, that central grocery and progresso markets. Uh, the, oh, boy, I'll tell you, I've got memories of these. Let me show you. This is a muffalata bread. It's basically a, an Italian seeded bread. You might find some of them, too, that actually have not uh, a lot more seeds in it. I prefer the type that's really crusty. And then you have the bread, and you have to have some filling for that at a muffalata. These are the various cold cuts, mortadella and uh, uh, provolone cheese and good salami and some ham. Uh, those are the ingredients. And then, of course, as like the poor boys, you've got to have is it dressed or not that has a little bit of lettuce and has some beautiful tomato and a good sauce. But one of the key muffalata ingredients is an olive salad. An olive salad. That's correct. It's made with some great green olives that are usually broken up or into little pieces. Each place has their little different version of, of how they should be cut or diced or broken up. And some black olives as well that get mixed in with that. Okay, then a fine, fine uh, brunoise of celery is added in there, as well as a fine brunoise of onion, and guess what else? Hey, they must have been reading my mind, some garlic. That's right, some garlic. So those are the ingredients that go into the olive salad. Then what they do with some of that juice and all, they break this up, they mix all of this delicious olive salad together, okay, chop it up, and uh, that's, that's the key, one of the key ingredients for the muffalata. Now, let me show you how we're going to make one of these guys, because we take, generally, they either can be cut in half, or I've also seen this technique, which I just love, where the bread, watch this, the bread is sort of not only cut in half, but it's sort of like a little, you've heard the expression also in New Orleans about an oyster loaf. Well, this is sort of the technique that they use for that. They actually take some of the bread out, okay? And an oyster loaf, we have a dish like this at Nola. An oyster loaf, like at Casamento's, the oyster loaf there, they fry all kinds of oysters, and then they season them, and they, they season them really crispy. The oysters are fried and crisp. Then they put all the oysters with a good, a good uh, hot sauce and good dipping sauce in there. But what we do for the muffalata is we put lettuce and olive salad, the juice and all. You see how that is? And then they usually drizzle a little olive oil and a little spice. And then they start layering, just like I'm, gonna, I'm showing you right here. They start layering this muffalata with the cold cuts. You see like this? And they sort of stuff it in. Then they take the provolone cheese like I have right here. Woo, boy, I'm getting hungry. It's muffalata time. Okay, look, little mortadella goes in there like that. That's how they make it. And, you know, there's people that argue about the muffalata, about whether it should or shouldn't be baked. Then they usually have a little bit of uh, great, beautiful tomatoes, sometimes a little more. Now, this is usually an optional thing. People will, will say, oh, no, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Salt and pepper for sure, olive oil. A little bit more olive relish goes in there. And look, the top goes on. 
And then you can either have a half or you can have a quarter. And there's a lot of arguments about whether they should be heated in the oven, warm or not. Well, sometimes I like mine hot and sometimes just like that. I hope that you had a wonderful time today. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.